And one of the problems I've had in the past, and I've had on this very last object I shot, was uh, our elongated stars. And it doesn't always happen, but sometimes they're more elongated than I'd like. And this is a star mass that I extracted from, uh, from an image. Um, let me show you what I was working on. This is the final product. Actually, it's the um, Owl Nebula, and it's uh, somewhat cropped. Anyway, that's the final image. It's not the raw image. But I, I extracted the stars using StarNet 2, and if you look at them, see if I can blow it up a little bit here, you can see that they are elongated, in this case, uh, horizontally, east-west. And I don't like that. Uh, and I don't want to live with it if I don't have to. So I decided, since I have free time, I decided to play around a little bit and see if I can figure out a way to make them rounded. I did not figure out a way to make them rounded in PixInsight, not by itself. I also used uh, Adobe Photoshop because I have, have a version of it, have a copy of it, and I wanted to see if perhaps with the combination of the two tools, I could do something. So again, I, I, first thing I did is I extracted a star mask from, uh, from the, my image using StarNet 2. And then I took this and I, and I just saved it, uh, save it to some folder um, as a TIFF file. And I think it, well, let me just say, I'll save, and then, uh, yes. And then if you, if you save it for use in Photoshop, I think you have to go to 16-bit. Um, because I don't think it'll accept 32. Anyway, so I did that. Now let's go into Photoshop, and I'll show you what I did. And there we go. And again, you can see these rather elongated stars. So what I did to round them is, a, is a, it's not a difficult process at all. But there's several steps to it, so I'll try to go through it here. So what I did was I tried to find a star that's not the brightest, and I'm going to select, I'm going to do under this, I'm going to do a color range, and I'm going to click on it. All right, and then I'm going to go up to this fuzziness thing, and it can go all the way out if you want, and you might want to. Um, you want to make sure you get all the stars. I go OK. And notice how it, let me go down here, magnification. Now all these stars are selected. All right, you can't really see. I mean, you can see these little things swirling around them. Okay, now, so the next thing I do is I want to actually expand this selected area. So under Select, you can go to Modify and Expand. And I want to expand it oh, quite a bit, and I chose a little bit of trial and error, 10 pixels. And I'll go OK, and what you see, look. See how it expands it? And so what you're going to work on now in Photoshop are just these expanded areas that you selected, which happen to be the stars. So what I then do is I'm going to expand this a little bit, make it a little bit bigger. Uh, let's find some good examples here, like this one. Now what I'm going to do, and notice how they're elongated east-west or horizontally. So I want to fatten them up in the north-south direction, kind of round them out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually do that. I'm going to fatten them in the north-south direction. I'll show you how to do that in Photoshop, and I'm going to save them, and I'm going to save two different files, and you'll see what I'm going to do here. So to fatten it, I'm going to actually move it. So fill, under Filter, there's something called there's Other, and there's something called Offset. Oh, look at that. It just moved it up. Okay, that's because I, I, I already had it set at minus 3. Minus 3 actually moved it up a little bit. Um, I'll go, let me go down to 0, 0, and I'll go back. You see that? So let's just do minus 3, all right? So I'm going to do um, minus 3, and, and, and it moved it up in this case. Now, the more, the higher this number you choose, like minus 3 or minus 4, or higher in terms of absolute value, or minus 2, the higher that number is in absolute value, the more it's going to shift. The more elongated your stars are, the higher that value is going to have to be. And I go, OK. And all I do is save this file, save as, and I already did actually. I'm going to save it as, and this one here, I, did, I called it star mass neg3 um, as a TIFF file, and 
I'll save it again. I'm going to overwrite it in this case. Um, okay. Now I'm going to go and undo, just so I don't. I get back to my original original um, star mask where they. I haven't shifted them, and I'm going to undo the offset. Now I'm going to go back into filter. I'm going to go to other offset, and I'm going to instead of doing minus three, I'm going to do plus three. I probably don't need it. And I moved it down. Okay. I'm going to go File, Save As, Save on your computer, and I hear that positive three. Okay. And I, again, I'll overwrite it. I already created it. Yes. Done. Now you're done in Photoshop. So I'm going to go down. I'm going to open this back up. I'm going to open those two files up. Let me just get these two down so they don't get in the way for now. I'm going to open those two files up, both of them. And let me just do that again. <laughs> okay, negative three, positive three, open. There you are. Now, you can't tell one's negative, one's positive. They look pretty much the same. So open up Pixel Math, and you're going to combine the two. Now, which I already have here. Star mask negative three plus star mask pause three. Now, uh, 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 actually, these are three ones, I think. Yeah. So I, I can go in an expression editor and change them, um, or I just easier just change this there. Three one and pause three one. There you go. Yes. Just add the two together, create a new file. I called it rounded, and uh, go. There you go. There's your rounded stars. Now, let me take that down. And if you look, let me look at up here. You'll notice two things. Number one is, let me, let me need to magnify this a little bit so you can see. And I'll do the same here. Whoops. Um, so you can see. And if I get this right, you'll be able to see. There we go. And you can see that. Here they are elongated. Wow, they're rounder, much rounder. But they're also bigger. Maybe that's okay, but if you don't want them bigger, you can actually reduce the size um, by using another t process. So I go to process, or processes, and it's called morphological transformation. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna select this morphological selection. And then you got to play around with this number a little bit. The size, you know, goes from three to whatever, 25. Um, and you know, you could try. The lower the smaller the number, the less it's going to reduce the size. Um, and for this one, I think I landed on 19, if I remember. I think that's what. And so basically, just go here and reduce the size. And then I compare the two. And you know what? They look pretty close to me. Close enough. Now again, we'll go up. Take a look at the two of them. One and two. Move this out of the way. And probably fairly similar size. Definitely rounder. And now you have a star mask called rounded that you can then add with pixel math back to your original or process file that you have as a starless file. And then you add the stars back, giving you that, what you want. So it's it's not difficult. It's a pretty easy technique. Um, one thing I failed to mention, and I'll bring it back now, is that when you're in Photoshop, notice mine were east-west, right? Or they were elongated in the horizontal. They might have been elongated in the vertical. What if they're elongated on an angle? I haven't done this, but my guess is all you need to do is rotate. So rotate it so that they're either horizontal or vertical, then do the process, and then rotate them back. But I think when you rotate them back, you're also going to have to crop away the margins because it's going to create a... Um, and I'll show you actually what it does. Let me just deselect these. Um, and if you go to image, uh, image rotation, let's, 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 do a, let's do a 10 degree counterclockwise, okay? All right, so did it 10 degrees counterclockwise, and then I'm gonna, I do my processing, let's say I do it, and then I'm gonna go back, image rotation, arbitrary, and 10 degrees clockwise to get it back. Now, see what happened? It creates this uh, 
um, border um, around it. And so you'll have to crop that out. Okay, thanks for watching this video and I hope that you find it useful.